Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's video, we are going over inspiration and how to go about getting a design for a piece. This video was inspired by someone on my YouTube channel and they said, hold on, let me just put my glasses on here. They said, hey Miss Flips, I'm just starting on my first piece. I have tried looking around, but I haven't seen many cover this. How do you find inspiration for a flip as far as looks go? So let's talk about that for a second. Let me start off by saying that this process is gonna look different for everyone. Art is such a personal thing, but as different as your process is gonna be from someone else's, the only thing that I recommend that everyone do is create something that you like. So in order to do this, I personally like to go with a design style or something that I want to try, and I like finding a piece that suits that style. So instead of finding a traditional piece and trying to force it into the mold of like a mid-century modern or an art deco, find something that suits the look of what you're going for. So for example, I had a client who wanted something that was really atomic and retro and cool. So instead of going with a cabinet that was a little bit more art deco, we went for a bar cabinet that was made in the time that the atomic style came around. And it just so happened that the atomic design fit this piece perfectly. But something that is also really important to take into account is whether or not this piece is going to be more or less valuable after you do something to it. So for example, there are pieces that I will not touch with a paintbrush unless I'm putting a top coat on it to seal the piece. So for example, this desk right here, okay, I found it. If you haven't seen this video yet, please go and check it out because it is insane. I found this desk at a thrift store for $35, 35, and it's worth $3,500. So there's no way that I am going to ever touch this piece with a paintbrush and for context, it's right down here. I use it as my desk. It's amazing. But it is authentic Danish rosewood. So I would never paint over something like this because it would decrease in value if I did. So when I come across pieces like this, I almost always restore them instead of refurbishing them. Now let's talk about how to come up with a design once you already have a piece. So this goes back into what I was saying about creating something that you love. I do not really care for solid painted pieces. I don't like it when all of the wood is covered, all of that beautiful wood grain. I like to leave some exposed wood, if not most of it being exposed, to create little accents. So you'll see with most of my painted pieces, I leave little spots that are untouched by paint just to let that wood really shine through. And this is something that I've done since the beginning of my career. If you look at these guys, these are from like the first couple of pieces that I ever did. Even back then, I still am very attracted to partially painted, partially wood pieces. That's just what I like. So a lot of the ones that I do, I try to implement that or find ways to implement that style into the piece where I can. Now, when it comes to the design that I put on a piece, I oftentimes look at what the piece is already giving me. So whether or not it has different shapes on the piece or a wood grain that I wanna leave open or work with, or for example, with this cabinet right here, as you can see, I put designs in the fogged glass. They had really thin brown lines etched into the glass and all I did was put pieces of tape in between those lines and created that fogged glass effect. So I worked with what the piece already gave me and created a design out of that. Also with something like this for example, the wood grain that was already on the bar cabinet had this beautiful kind of diamond effect to it. It had like kind of a rounded diamond shape. And so I went ahead and worked with the diamond shape that the veneer naturally had and created a diamond accent to go along with that wood grain. Something that also inspires me when creating pieces is to look at other art forms, look at other artists. I have been so inspired by not only furniture, but also other artists like tattoo artists or stained glass artists or painters, so many others. Instagram is a great place for inspiration because it's literally limitless. There are so many amazing artists on there. Search different kind of art forms and look at those artists and see how you can implement that kind of style into your own art form. For example, this piece 
was highly inspired by stained glass. There's an artist on Instagram that I follow and they had like a really natural organic kind of stained glass window and I took inspiration from that both color wise and shape wise and I put that onto doors with paint. And with these pieces, this was for a challenge that was inspired by traditional tattoos, but instead of going the more traditional route, I went more towards neo-traditional and decided to do line art all over these pieces. They were also heavily inspired by street art, things like murals or taking, you know, old trash and making them beautiful because these pieces were really beat up. The wood was torn, the veneer was damaged, I had to make a lot of repairs, but I ended up leaving a lot of the damage because I thought it was beautiful to take something that was damaged and leave it that way, but then make it into something that's sought after, desired, and made beautiful. For most of my Art Deco bar cabinets, it's pretty simple. You can basically just look up Art Deco design and see half of those designs in my artwork or at least see the inspiration for them because I'm constantly looking up Art Deco designs on Google and just seeing what pops up and I just pull inspiration from those designs and kind of just sandwich everything together so that it just creates this beautiful kind of fluid design. But then others are very specific to what a client wants. So for example, this client wanted something that was representative of the Chrysler building because she lives in New York. So I took the Chrysler building design and I turned it into an art deco kind of stylized version of that. Also something that might help you if you're just starting out furniture flipping is doing dupe challenges, challenging yourself. It doesn't even have to be involved with like an official dupe challenge or a YouTuber or a channel, whatever. It can just be you finding a piece that you like and then finding a piece on Facebook Marketplace or whatever and trying to recreate that piece. That's exactly what I did with this piece here. I did this for a dupe challenge probably about a year ago now, and this was the result. I wasn't even sure if the technique that I was using was gonna work, but it ended up working beautifully. Which leads me into another point. Do not be afraid to experiment. I cannot tell you how many times I have tried something and failed miserably. For example, these two pieces, I didn't even get the final video done until a week after the challenge was due, just because I wasn't getting the desired effect that I wanted, but I tried and it was a lot of trial and error. But at the end, I found something that worked and I found something that gave me that kind of gritty, dirty feel that I wanted. And that wouldn't have happened if I just was like, oh, I don't know how to do that. I'm not gonna try. I finally found something that worked. Something that I would have never found out unless I tried it like I did with this piece is that you can create dimensions and separate designs just by the stain color you choose. So you don't even have to paint a piece in order to create a really cool design. You can still show all the wood grain, you can appreciate the natural beauty of the wood grain itself on these pieces, but still add a little bit of flair, a little bit of texture with the color of stain. And that's something that I never would have known unless I tried, because I had never seen someone try to do this type of thing until I did it. Now, I'm not saying that I am the first one to do it by any means because I have no idea if I am or not. I just know that I personally had never seen this style before. Something that always keeps me inspired is nature. I am always trying to implement organic shapes. And when I'm not doing commissions, that's more than likely the design that I'm gonna go for. So things like leaves and circles and organic just kind of like you know, just, just flow state kind of art is, is what I tend to gravitate towards most. So trying to implement the things that you love most into your art, that to me is, is the best form of inspiration. Another thing that inspires me is if there's two of something. So if there's doors or if I'm working on nightstands, I always try to play off of that and try to make things symmetrical or mirrored. So if you look at these nightstands, for example, I painted the same design but mirrored on each of the nightstands and that created this really cool effect where if you put them together, it creates one solid image. And that to me is just 
awesome. I, I love that. These are some of my favorite pieces that I've ever done because of that. And for pieces like this, honestly, it took me days to come up with designs for these. Don't be afraid to just sit with a piece and let the inspiration come to you. Oftentimes, inspiration comes to me when I'm either just about to go to bed, meditating, or I have started the piece. So I'm cleaning, I'm sanding, and then all of a sudden that's when the inspiration comes to me. So don't be afraid to let yourself sit with it. But also, if you want to get started on a piece, don't feel like you need to have a design all planned out in order to just start. Trust me, once you get to know a piece and once you see the potential behind it, the inspiration will come. At the end of the day, just remember that there are no rules. This is an art form just like anything else, so inspiration can literally come from anywhere. Don't be afraid to be bold, to try things, to experiment, to fail, and just have fun with it. I hope that this video helped inspire you for your next piece, and I would love to hear down in the comments what inspires you in your art form. Thank you so much to MS for their comment. It was an awesome comment that really motivated me to get this video out there for you guys and I hope that this helps inspire you all to go forward and do whatever you want to have fun. If you guys haven't yet make sure you like and subscribe and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flipping family and until next time guys stay flipping.